Welcome to Glorious Botafogo, the only place on the internet where you will find Botafogo news in English. Botafogo beat Volta Redonda three goals to zero at the Raulino de Oliveira. This past Wednesday, the goals were scored by Bastos Savarino, his first with the club, and also Bastos' first goal with the club, and Junior Santos with a beautiful goal there with a nice little chip over the goalkeeper at the end of the match. This win puts the club back in the G4, the top four teams that make it to the semifinal of the state championship, which is where Botafogo, along with Vasco Fluminense and Flamengo, want to be, because not being in the top four is a failure for those big four clubs. But also, it's a success story for the ones that are, you know, not considered the big clubs of the um, the state to make it into the top four. So it's not good for those clubs, for the for the big four clubs not to be in it. And it's great for the little clubs to be in that. As you remember last year, Botafogo was not included on those top four clubs, which is considered a failure in the eyes of a lot of supporters, including inside of the club, because it is always the goal to be in the semifinal uh, and also to be fighting for the final, even though the Carioca is not really a, uh, not anymore, it used to be a very prestigious tournament and to win the Carioca was you know, bra bragging rights. And I guess you, you could say it could be the bragging rights um, between the four big clubs, you know, but honestly, n no fans for from any of the four clubs really care to win the Carioca, to be very completely honest, because now the power, I guess you could say, shifted, importance shifted to the Copa do Brasil and the Brasileirão and the Libertadores, especially if you're speaking of those four clubs. Uh, the, the focus really has to be on those three tournaments. In order to be able to do well on those three tournaments, you need to have a good uh, roster of players. And the club, Botafogo, is working towards that. One of the newest names that showed up on the radar is actually an older name, which is Gregory a center defensive midfielder from Inter Miami that got transferred from Bahia a few seasons ago. He is back on the radar. Not only that, between the club and the player is all said and done. There was even, you know, some post uh, yesterday or the day before um, that it was all done. It was, a, you know, it was a done deal between all the parts involved, but that is not the case. Uh, between Botafogo and Inter Miami, it is not yet completely done you know there's some some things that need to be adjusted but it is the hope of the club to to sign Gregory so much so that he was included in the list that the club sent uh Comebol for the Libertadores roster so the roster was due Friday I think there are some technicalities that maybe some names could be included on Monday but it, everything has to be done by Monday if it's not done by Monday, the player cannot play the Libertadores. So if Botafogo is going to sign Gregory, it needs to be done this weekend. And all of the paperwork needs to be sent on Monday. If it's not, no go. Speaking of the Carioca, we need to talk about it. Because I understand it's part of the preseason. But I thought it was a huge, huge mistake to include Luis Enrique against the Volta Hedona game. So much so that the player picked up an injury and now he's gone for three to four weeks. I think it was a massive, massive mistake because Luis Enrique, as per an agreement with the club, went to Spain to finalize everything. He returned to Brazil. He had one training session and then he was put on against Volta Redonda. I, I get it. He was put on the second half, but I don't think he should have been in the roster at all. Why are you going to... Why? Why? Why are you going to put Luis Enrique in the roster against a team that is in the bottom four of the competition in a game that was already 2-0 up? Why are you... Just why? The player was tired from, you know, trip, still getting used to the changes in time zones. He had one training session, you know, on top of all of that, all that it includes traveling from and outside the country, you know, it, it is a tiring thing. It is a tiring experience, it, no matter how used to it you are. 
and then it, it was raining in the, in the pitch that was not the best in a pitch that was heavy and then the player had an injury to his left calf so i think it was a, a, a amateur mistake really by those in charge of saying you know who's you know who's ready to play and who's not it was it was a, to me it was a terrible mistake um, it's a mistake that if I was John Texter, I would have chewed out the person that gave the okay for that. They should have known better. And Louisa Hinky was not necessary because guess what? Tomorrow, there's a derby against Vasco, one of the four big teams. Louisa Hinky could have been preserved against Volta Redonda and put in tomorrow versus Vasco da Gama because... At the end of the week, next week, Botafogo has a Libertadores. That could have been the preparation match for Luis Enrique and then rest during the week and then play the Libertadores match. So to me, again, massive mistake. Damian Suarez had his official press conference yesterday as a Botafogo player, spoke to the press and, you know, just voiced his excitement about being at the club. He's going to play the Libertadores, which is, a, I think, is a competition that he said he never played. I think he played the Sudamericana back when he was um, in Defensor. So it's it's a, it's a great um, opportunity for Damian Suarez to play. You know, he's, he is 35 years old, and I think he's got maybe a couple of years tops and he spoke about how important it is not only for him to be part of the of the active roster of players that are playing but also to be involved with players of the same position like Rafael and Mateo Ponte because he's going to be actively involved in the development of Mateo because they are from the same country and they play the same position one is 37 and one is 20 so it's it's a great role model for Mateo when it comes to playing the role and just because of how well um, defensively Damian Suarez is, is. He, you know, he, he played nine years in the Liga. That's a lot of years to be marking players like Vini Jr., uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, um, you know, Messi, just players like that, Dembele, you know, quick and agile players that play on that left wing that compared to the level of some of these players from Brazil, I believe it's going to come in handy. Because there's a lot of quick and agile players and, and really talented players, and Damian Suarez has seen has seen it all when it comes to that. So great name. And it adds to along with Alain and hopefully Gregory, they're all captains of their club. If that is a there is a trait that Botafogo was looking for. John Texter, along with Mazuku, they were looking for these players to have personality traits, leadership traits, because they're all captains in the club. And they could all fight to be captains, you know, at the middle of the year when everyone's there, they could all fight for the armband. Because not only is there um, those three, there are players inside the club as well. Gachito Fernandes, Alexander Barbosa. Massau, which was a captain before, Che Che, Chiquinho Suarez. So there's like eight or nine names that I've talked about that could all be captains. The derby tomorrow was almost canceled by the petition of Vasco da Gama to not only have a FIFA referee, but a FIFA referee from outside of Rio to come and be the officiator for the match. But uh, the Rio State Federation declined and assigned a name a different aim for the match. So we will see how that goes. Vasco has been complaining a lot, just like Botafogo, of the refereeing and just the level and the quality of referees that come out of the state is a very poor. And it just shows how, how poor uh, refereeing is, not only in Rio, but in Brazil in general. The level of referees here, is, not here, but in Brazil, I mean United States, but the, le the level of referees in Brazil it, it is the bottom of the pit. It is the bottom of the very bottom. It is really bad. This referee situation needs to be looked at. And even the VAR, there's some bizarre calls made by VAR. That to me, if you can't make the call with VAR, it's either one or two things. is incompetency 
It is a level of incompetence never seen before. And we've seen that throughout other leagues too, but it is a big level of incompetence or is bribing. It is actively making calls that affect the game for for better or for worse. And I don't know what is the incentive behind it, but it needs to be looked at. I think that is amongst all of the fans of all the clubs. I'm not talking just Botafogo and Vasco. I'm talking about all of the league. It needs to be looked at. Botafogo and Vasco play tomorrow at the Newton Santos Stadium at 1 p.m. USA time. I think I believe that is 3 or 4 p.m. Brazil. Just Google it and you will see when the time it is on at your time zone. But tomorrow, U.S. Central time, it is at 1 p.m. at home. So Botafogo has a derby tomorrow at home against a traditional um, opponent, an opponent that a lot of times um, Botafogo and Vasco are considered friends. You know, it's a friendship derby. I mean, you know, the Fluminense derby is considered the, the old derby, the oldest derby, and then the Flamengo derby is considered the, the rivalry derby, if you want to say it that way. I'd be making the comments on, on social media, um, especially on X um, and on Instagram, if I remember. <laughs> I just don't use Instagram that much. But anyways, yeah, catch all the videos here on X or YouTube and Instagram. Set your notifications on so you get all of the notifications, all the posts that I will make on those social medias. And I'll see you. Oh, I'll see you then on the next video.